thank you very much for inviting me to this interesting meeting. I'm very glad to be here in this beautiful building. Um, my paper is moving from the perspective, um, a perspective on um, Northern Ireland to uh, reflections on the UK and then to a cross-cultural perspective looking at um, a research study um, and training initiative I was involved in in Ethiopia. So my paper will reflect on progress in autism understanding and provision in the UK, notwithstanding the many um, unmet needs. Um, I'm going to describe a research, research into the situation of people with autism and their families in Ethiopia and um, an integrated training initiative that was part of that research and draw some um, conclusions from the cross-cultural perspective. So I want to... Um, start with a brief historical reflection, to, just to remind us how far we've come. Um, autism, as you probably know, was first identified in the 1940s, um, and due to um, uh, Kanna in the States and um, Asperger in Austria, both publishing sets of case studies. Um, but the first children um, were not diagnosed in the UK until the 1960s, and at that time there were no kind of separate distinctive criteria for autism. They were just diagnosed with childhood schizophrenia, as it was called. Um, and the understanding and availability of services and treatment was minimal at that time. Um, this is a quote from Michael Barron, who went on to become the founding president of the National Autistic Society. His son, Timothy, was one of the first children diagnosed. And he says, um, there were doctors saying, this child is hopelessly handicapped, and the best thing for him is to go into a hospital. You should get on with your life and forget all about him. Um, there was also stigma due to ignorance and also due to what was at that time a, a theory that um, parents, mothers were to blame for their children's autism. So this is another parent from that group. Um, we were told that it's the parents and the parents are cold and the parents are... Um, and the parents were blamed. That was the sort of fashionable view that you know it was your fault. Um, and that was from Hannah Law Brownsburg. Her uh, son, David, went on to become a talented artist. Now, um, parents have played a pioneering role, I think, um, uh, and uh, since the 1960s, UK parents have been involved in combating stigma, um, founding autism charities, campaigning for diagnosis, interventions, educational provision and support services. Um, and that group, um, some of whom the members I've mentioned, and also including, of course, Lorna Wing, um, founded the National Autistic Society in 1962, the first school for children with autism in London, the Sybil Elgar School. In Northern Ireland, things um, got going a little bit later. Um, the Autism Northern Ireland was founded in 1990, and the National Autistic Society set up its Northern Ireland office in 2005. And both have launched key initiatives um, with the Northern Ireland Assembly. Um, now, if we move to... So just kind of reflecting a little bit on how far we've come. Notwithstanding that there are many problems, um, diagnostic educational intervention services um, are offered they're not always um, freely available. Um, there are research insights into the cognition, behavior, um, and brain function, uh, as well as into long-term outcomes. Um, there's a recognition that um, there's a probably under-diagnosis in females and in adults in general. Um, there is a recognition of the, education, of the economic cost of autism. Um, and I think thanks to, in part at least, to the neurodiversity and advocacy movements, there is a change in society's perceptions of autism. Um, we have legislation, including the um, Autism Act um, 2009, um, <laughs> focusing in particular on the needs of adults, and um, then the Autism Act um, Northern Ireland found it, um, passed in 2011, um, focusing on supporting individuals and autism uh, or, um, and their families of all ages. However, there are setbacks, and two recent reports have highlighted disappointment that the strategies and action plans associated with those two acts um, have not really um, um, been met. 
Um, looking at autism worldwide, so um, the, there are different figures of prevalence quoted, and they often change, but um, a recent authoritative um, source quotes the uh, um, prevalence in the UK as 1.1 1 .1 in 100, and that's including children and adults. Um, worldwide, um, the estimated um, population prevalence is 0.6, it's much lower, and that is um, very probably due to um, low prevalence estimates in countries where diagnosis is not free, freely available, poor awareness of autism, poor professional training, and so on. Um, in the worldwide arena, once again, um, there are cases where parents have played a pioneering role. Adam Feinstein's book um, on the history of autism um, covers a number of very interesting conversations with parents who have played a pioneering role at, in promoting change and establishing services. Um, Ethiopia um, is a, a low-income country. Um, it's in sub-Saharan Africa, with a population of almost 100 million, 50% um, of whom have children. It's one of those countries that I mentioned where autism prevalence is not known, and it's likely that you would need um, appropriate, culturally appropriate diagnostic tools in order to do the diagnoses from which prevalence estimates can be made. There are just two child psychiatrists, two fully trained child psychiatrists, um, both based in Addis Ababa, and until recently, there have been just two specialised schools, also based in Addis. Um, the majority of the population, about 85%, is rural. Um, there have been some milestones towards um, mental health provision generally. Um, in 2003, the establishment of a postgraduate psychiatry training programme joint with the Addis Medical School and the Medical School of Toronto. Um, and in 2012, um, the launching of the first national mental health strategy. Stigma and exclusion um, uh, for children with autism or children who are probably have autism is prevalent. It may be primary, that's to say it may be experienced, directed at or experienced by the child, or more probably, where, where children are, are, are very disabled, secondary directed and, at and experienced by parents, families and associates. So here are some examples of the kinds of um, stigmatising comments and reactions um, that, that people have had. Um, so in relation to finding accommodation, to finding schooling, just to taking your child out in the street, parents have experienced all kinds of stigma in relation to autism. And um, some part of the research um, project actually looked at the relationship between stigma and traditional beliefs. You'll see there um, the comment from one parent. Um, some people say it is because of her sin, her cruelty, that this happened to her boy. This comes from a traditional perspective, thinking that somehow the parent has sinned, and that's why the child has autism. Um, once, uh, on. Um, once again, parents have served a pioneering role. So those two schools in Addis that I mentioned, are both started by parents. Um, Zemi Yunus. Um, opened the Joy Centre in 2002 because she couldn't find any school that would take her own child. Um, of course, it's much more than a school. It's a centre which provides support and advice and training for parents. Um, Rahel Abainye, also parent of a child with autism, opened the Nehemia Centre in 2011. Both these parents um, and the co um, um, co-founders and, co and parents who are on the committees of the school play a, a great role in campaigning for change in mobilising professionals and mobilising politicians. Um, rural health provision and medical health provision and medical facilities in rural areas are very sparse and yet 85% of the population is rural. And in 2004, um, the Federal Ministry of Health um, addressed this by trying to develop a more distributed um, health, health 
provision service um, delivered by health extension workers. Um, these workers are trained, they have a one year training to deliver primary health care and to, th to date around 38,000 have received that training. Um, two health extension workers are assigned to each Kebele. Kebele is a rural community of um, around 5,000 people. Um, they're based at a health post. You see a simple health post here on the left. This would be the kind of office that a, a, health, work, a health extension worker would have. Um, and this is the postdoc on the research project talking um, to a health worker that we did some work with. Um, in 2011, I think that's right, um, the Ethiopian government commissioned um, uh, some upgraded tra upgrading training for these health extension workers and involving a team from the Open University and University of Addis Ababa. And um, 13 uh, health modules were designed um, for this upgrading training of the health workers. Now, 12 of these modules um, were on adult and child physical health problems, which very much reflects what were then the main health priorities um, in Ethiopia. And part of one module um, was on mental health. And of that, there was some material on child problems, um, including a discussion of intellectual disability and a brief description of autism. And those materials are available for download um, via the International Development Office HEAT website. It, the program is called Health Education and Training HEAT. Um, shortly after that, my colleague, Dr. Rosa Hoekstra, um, who's now at King's College London, led a team um, in a um, research project, which was the very first research project on autism in Ethiopia, combined with a training of initiative building on the original HEAT training, and therefore called HEAT Plus. Um, and the aims were to document the situation of autistic children and their families in Ethiopia, to evaluate the imp impact of those heat um, mental health materials um, on um, rural health extension workers, their attitudes towards autism, their knowledge and their mode of operation, um, to develop um, enhanced extended training mental health training materials um, including um, an augmented focus on autism and developmental difficulties, and then to evaluate the impact of that um, extended training material. The situational analysis um, was a um, collection of findings from interviews with service providers, stakeholders, and, and as well as looking at public doc documentation. And um, it presented a picture um, which I've already hinted at, of sparse knowledge and understanding among the general public, um, stigma, exclusion and negative perceptions, low awareness um, and lack of specialist training among health professionals, lack of diagnostic and screening tools is appropriate for the culture and the context, um, inadequate mental health services, um, lack of funding and especially competing with other health priorities. Of course, um, there are problems like AIDS, malaria and other infectious diseases in Ethiopia, um, which are pri priorities. Um, shortage of schools, education and interventions and a lack of research studies. Um, to evaluate the um, initial heat training, the... Um, um, researchers conducted structured interviews with 104 of the health extension workers who'd received that brief heat mental health training. And then there were in-depth interviews with 11 of these um, health extension workers. Um, these, the health extension workers said that the mental health materials were useful in their work, helped them in providing a service, um, and that they thought that it actually improved their, their ability to provide services. But they also indicated that they needed more. 
Um, so at the bottom here is a quote from one of the health extension workers. The mental health module covered very little on child developmental disorders and autism. It would be better to include the symptoms of developmental disorders, including autism, and details on how to make diagnosis, identify causes, and provide treatment. So we then set about um, devising some um, specific mental health training materials. Um, with the aim of um, meeting the health extension workers' need for further training. And there were two, two branches to this. One was the mental health pocket guide dealing with adult and child mental health in general with um, sections on autism and intellectual disability. And then there were five videos which modelled for health extension workers how they should go about interviewing um, uh, parents, mothers, where the health extension worker ex suspected that, that the child had um, autism or intellectual disability or another developmental problem. So in approaching this material, it was of course essential to um, match it to the cultural context. So for instance, the health extension workers are not being trained in diagnosis. They're being um, given tips on how to identify possible cases. And then the question arises, well, what happens if you give a parent, you say that to the parent, your child may have autism, then what? Because most of those parents have no chance of accessing a proper diagnostic facility, let alone intervention. So it's important that these materials included um, information, simple strategies that the health extension worker could use and simple strategies to pass on to parents. This is an example of some of the kind of um, advice in the mental health pocket guide. Um, look out for and listen to talk, to talk about a child who is usually kept in the house. So these children are often sequestered. They may even be chained on some occasions. Um, does not speak or respond like other children of the same age. And then um, things to, for this health extension worker to tell the family to try and um, combat you know, the belief that it's their fault that the child has autism and to combat um, punishing type um, behavior towards the children and then simple strategies to give the parents there and then. Um, the videos, as I said, were five scenarios modeling health extension worker conversations with women in the Cabele and if I can... <laughs> የቤት ለቤት ጉብኝታችሁን በመታካይዱበት ወቅት በተደጋጋሚ ወደፊትና ወደ ኋላ የሚወዛወዝ ልጅ ተመለከታላችሁ። ስታናገሩት መልስ አይሰጣችሁም። ይሄ ልጅ ችግር ይኖርበት ይሁን ብላችሁ አስባችሁ እናቱም ማነጋገር ትጀምራላችሁ። ቪዲዮን በመተመለከቱ በጊዜ በሚከተሉት ነጥቦች ላይ ትኩረት አድርጉ። ባለሟያ የናት ዮሐንስ ስሚት በማይጎዳ መልኩ ስለ ልጅዋ ችግሮች እንደጠየቀቻት ባለሞያ የናትዮን ጭንቀትና ሐሳብ ለመረዳት እንደሞከረች የባለሞያ ንግግርና ሁኔታ የናትዮን ስሜት ያጋናዘበ እንደሆነ ባለሞያ እናትያ ወደ ጤና ተቋም እንደተሄድ ተበረታታታለች ባለሞያ እናትዮን በሌላ ቀን ለማግኔት ቀጠሮት ይዛለች እንደምናልሽ ነው ይዘሮ በቀለች እግዚአብሔርን መስቀል እንደሆነ ስሜት ደና ነኝ ስለ ልጅ ማሙሽ በጣም ጨነቃል ነው እንጂ ማሙሽ ምን ሆነ አረ ማሙሽ እንደሌለች ልጆች አይደለም ከሌሎች ልጆች ምንድነው የሚለየው እሱ እንግዲህ ይሄን ብዙ ጊዜ እኔን ሳይኝ አይስቀም አይጫውትም በጣም ደግሞ ጮኸት በጣም ይጣላል አሁን ስንት አመት ሆነ አሁን ታ 66 አመት አለፈ ታዲያንቺ እነዚህ ነገሮች መቼ ነው ማስተዋል የጀመርሽው አረ ከድሮም ጀምሮ እንደዚህ ነው ነገር ግን ይያደገ ሲመጣ ይስተካከላን ብለን አስበን ነበር አልተኬ those were actually two of the psychiatric trainees at university of um, Addis Ababa university um when we started filming the actress who had been employed for this didn't turn up the first day so um we um improvised so um just to give you a brief idea of the further steps um 
there, will, there are further evaluations of both the impact of the heat materials and the heat plus materials on the, on the um, um, trained health extension workers. And those um, are looking at um, changes in their attitudes and beliefs about autism. Um, and the report on those findings is forthcoming. And the training videos are now available online and have started to attract interest from other people in low and middle income settings for um, use as, as training materials and the mental health pocket guide will be added. So to conclude, um, autism is a global problem with cross-cultural disparities in awareness and service provision depending on geographical area and developmental status. Nonetheless, stigma and inadequate access to diagnosis, services and support are common problems for autistic individuals and families worldwide. And I hope I've made that link clear. Um, throughout autism's history, I think parents have played a key role in um, combating stigma and promoting change. Training also plays a, um, a crucial role in awareness raising, capacity building and service provision. Um, and that kind of cascade approach that I've influenced here is very suitable for certain settings where the health extension workers are trained in health colleges and then they, they pass um, information and strategies on to parents. Um, and resources within the Open University educational framework do um, offer the possibility of effective training um, with potential for mass impact, whether through these sorts of collaborations in um, developing countries um, or through the kind of usual OU distance teaching model. The OU has a range of resources on autism. Understanding the autism spectrum is a 20-week um, um, level one undergraduate course, um, which has so far um, been studied by well over 6,000 students, including many who are parents and carers or professionals. Um, and um, in fact, it played a role in the um, Scottish Government strategy for autism in, uh, I think, 2012 to 2014. We had money from the Scottish Government to fund students in Scotland to study the course. Um, we have a badged open course um, in the pipeline, which will be an eight-week free resource on autism, which will be globally available, which I think could again play a very important role in kind of mass um, introduction to the autism field. And it's not providing details of training in interventions, but it provides a cross-the-board <coughs> introduction. Um, and we have open we have open reach materials which give. Um, members of the public who are interested, kind of brief guide, quiz to self-assess their knowledge. Um, so I'd like to thank you, and I'd also like to um, make clear that the work in Ethiopia is the work of a big team, um, led very effectively by Dr Rosa Herkstra, who, as I said, is now at King's College London. Thank you very much.